Hi, I'm Lavita. It's always been the same. People would come to me once they found out, and they would say, oh, "Are you really the goddaughter of Nancy Wilson? Really? Can you take me to meet Nancy Wilson? Just like her. You know that, don't you? Everybody thinks I sing just like Nancy Wilson. Well, anyway, this is the show. It's called Nan and Me because Nancy Wilson was my godmother, but to me, she was simply Nan. Come along and join us as we celebrate both the music and my most cherished memories, Nancy Wilson. Welcome to Nan and Me. Today's theme is on being a sexual woman. Welcome to the show, Nan and Me. I'm your host, LaVita, and I am Nancy Wilson's goddaughter. So thank you for joining me. It's a show where we go down memory lane and we celebrate together both the music and the memories of Nancy Wilson. So today's show is all about Nancy and her sex appeal. Okay, I don't know how I'm going to do with this one, but let's get started. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Nan and Me. I've got my little cup. I always have a mug of tea with me. By the way, I love this cup, if you can get a good shot of that. Can you guys see that? Okay, good. It, you're probably wondering, why does she have a cup with just eyes on it? I don't know. It's just, that's how I am with mugs. If I see one and it just attracts me, gotta have it. This was my go-to when I was in Vegas. Maybe I needed some eyes to watch me while I was there. Hmm. Come to think of it, that probably was why. <laughs> okay, but that's another show. Okay, so today's show is about Nan and her sexuality. Um, one of the things I remember is I went to a supper club uh, a few years ago, and uh, this was a supper club owned by one of the men who was in the Rat Pack. That's Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin and Sammy Davis. And he ran with the whole Rat Pack group and he was a performer as well. Well, he opened a, um, a supper club in Palm Springs, California. So I went there to have dinner and his decoration or his decor around the room was all the black and white photos from yesteryears. And it was beautiful. I was walking through there and I was looking at it. And there she was, Nancy Wilson on the wall in all her glory, just singing. I think she was singing with Count Basie in this photo. And I was just mesmerized. I, I always am when I see her doing things because it's like I know that's who she is, but I forget sometimes. She's just Nan to me. So I'm looking at the photo and the owner, the proprietor, he comes up behind me and he begins to explain to me who she is. Well, of course, I already know who she is. But the thing that threw me is he kept referring to her as these other names I didn't know. He was calling her Fancy Nancy, the baby. And I'm like, who are you talking to? And he said, that's what we called Nancy Wilson back then. She was Fancy Nancy, and she was always the baby. And so 
I learned something that day. Apparently, when Nancy got started, because she started so young at, what, age 15, uh, she was actually on the road with Cannonball, and she was on the road with Count Basie's orchestra, that she was so young in the business, but holding her on, that they referred to her as the baby. Now, where the fancy Nancy came in, well, that was her style. She always was a bit fancy, so I guess the men just took up the nickname, and she became... Fancy Nancy. By the way, just dawned on me, my daughter has a doll called Fancy Nancy. I wonder if that has anything, hey, could this be her doll line or something? Or did they take that name from her? Something else to investigate. Okay, so let's talk sexuality and Nancy Wilson. This is a hard one for me because I think we all have to get to a point where we accept and we realize that our parents are not just our parents. They're actually sexual human beings. Hold on a second. <laughs> you crazy as hell. Give me five minutes with her in the bath. Ew. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. Anyway, we do all have to get to that point where we realize our parents are sexual human beings. I'm trying not to dry heat. I always had a problem with this. Uh, I still have a problem with it. With my own mother, I have a problem with it. When she wants to talk intimate talk, my response is usually, okay, mom, we are so not having this conversation. And she'll say, oh, we're so having this conversation. I don't like having that conversation. But anyway, Nan knew this about me, and it would actually annoy her. And she would say, grow up. How do you think you got here? But see, that's the thing. I don't want to think about how I got here. I don't even want to know how I got here, especially not in details. No one wants to know how they got here. So, so, and I tell my mother all the time, I don't want to know you like this. I really don't. I just, I don't. I guess it's that Madonna complex. We all want to believe our mother is Madonna and she doesn't even have awful thoughts. Just flowers roam through her mind at all times. That's how I was about my mom. And that's how I am about Nan as well. I just don't want to know them like that. But I did hit a point where I finally had to realize Nan too is a sexual human being. Ew. <laughs> so how did I finally get there? I'll let you know in a second. Now. Don't get me wrong, I've always seen Nan exactly as all of you have seen her. She's beautiful, elegant, sophisticated, classy, but that's pretty much where it stopped for me. <laughs> what I noticed is I had a hard time just seeing her as a woman. And I, it would always jolt me whenever I was at concerts or out in public with her because the response men would have I was like, stop that, don't do that. <laughs> I mean, if you went to one of our shows, it was nothing to be sitting there. And then she would come out on stage and she would be dressed so elegant. And then the men would just lose it. They would go bat around you. And I found myself looking down the aisle as a man would be yelling, hey, Nancy, looking good, baby. And I'm like, ew. <laughs> so. I always had a problem with that, the way men would catcall. And whenever I was around her, men would just seem to lose it, and they would just rush over to her, and they had to have an autograph, or they had to take a picture. And we won't even talk about how they had to have a hug. So by the time we would get home, she would actually be sore from the way men would grab on her. And I couldn't understand for the longest why men just clamor to just touch her. So finally, I had to realize she's a beautiful woman and men desired her. <laughs> oh my God! Okay, so you'll be happy to know that I finally was able to put Nan's sexuality her sex appeal in so 
some sort of perspective. You see, I'm not all the way there, but I do have it in some perspective. And what did that for me was the day that I met Jason Momoa. I lost it. Not even going. I mean, I just hit a point where I basically had speech. <laughs> so if anyone's ever seen Jason Momoa, you understand this. I mean, in my own defense, we're talking Jason Momoa, Game of Thrones, Kyle Drago, Aquaman. Put his picture back up. I want you to see this. Okay, so once I felt those feelings of, I've got to touch him, I've got to know him, I've got to be in his space, I realized that's what other people feel about Nan. That's how men feel. Okay, I get it. The second thing that helped put it in perspective was a performance I saw her give, and that was with John B., her bass player. And they were doing the rendition of Teach Me Tonight. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but it's very, very sexy. And at first when I was watching it, I was thinking, oh dear, <laughs> okay, <laughs> because she was taking that song to some serious levels. But then something hit me. When you perform a song the way she performs this song, my Nan knew some things, apparently, and there are just some things you cannot fake, not even for a performance. Enjoy. If a shooting star Graduation's almost here, my love. 
I am not the only person who had a problem with dealing with Nan as a sexual human being. My son apparently had the same problem. Now, my son loved Nancy Wilson. He knew her as my godmother. So where she was my Nan, for him, she was Mama Nan. That's what he called her. And he didn't look forward to hearing her sing and being on television and all of that. Brian only had a few interests when it came to Nancy Wilson. Thanksgiving and Christmas. He loved her for her kisses. He loved her for her hugs. But even more, he loved her for her cooking. So when he hit the age around eight, I decided it was time for Brian to see Nan and who his mama Nan really was. So I took him to a performance. It was University of Southern California's Performing Arts Center, and she was performing with their orchestra. He was very excited to go because he simply did not know her like this. Well, just as it happened to me, it happened to him. And you know how boys are about mama. So he definitely had a problem with that night. Right before Nan came out, beautiful venue. He was dressed in his finest little suit as a gentleman. And we were sitting in a sold out uh, performing arts center. But once she took the stage, the cat call started. The men were whistling and they were screaming her name and baby, you look good and I love you. And I guess this just did not sit well with Brian. Again, you know how boys are about mama. So Nan, she started her singing. And as you know, it wasn't always ballads and soft songs and the classic standards. Every now and then, Nan could kick into some serious, fun songs. And that's what happened this night. She was singing a song, and you could tell she was definitely feeling it, or as my generation would say, she was getting turned up. So <laughs> she's up there, and she's singing, and she's going for it, and the men are cheering her on, and they're loving it, and it was really good. And for some reason, I turned and I glanced at my son to see how he was enjoying it, and he was in full throttle meltdown. I mean, the arms were crossed, the angry, mean mugging, and he was looking up and down the aisle at men and frowning at them. And he had tears in his eyes. And I remember turning to him and I said, what is the matter with you? And he said to me, I don't like Mama Nan on the stage singing about her goodies. <laughs> Because that was what the song was. Well, the song is, you know where my goodies really live. You know how to make me jump for joy. And he was like, OK, you can put all that back in the right. box. You know where my goodies really live. He did not like that. 
<laughs> so I told him if she's just singing, it doesn't mean anything, calm down. But in all honesty, for the rest of the show, he was angry. And every man who had the audacity to yell out his desire for Nancy Wilson, he got the look. <laughs> I shared it with her. We went backstage and I told her, I said, Brian is not happy with you because you were up there sharing with the world how you felt about your goodies and where they live. And she thought that was hilarious. And he was about to cry still. So she just took him in her arms and she hugged him and she kissed him. And she said, I'm still your mama Nan. The first time I heard Nan sing this song, it was a personal night for her. I do believe we were at the University of Michigan's Performing Arts Center, the Power Center is what it's called. And Nan had this rule, and her rule was when she takes to the stage, she is not Nancy Burton, her married name. She is now Nancy Wilson. So she leaves the family life behind. Not true. Just want you to know, not true. And if you've ever been to a concert, when she sits on the stool and she sings and she talks with you and she shares with you, 
really you kind of get some insight on what's in her heart at that moment. Now this night, uh, she was singing this song and it was a special night for her because it was my god sister's prom night. And with all the miles between California and Michigan, she just couldn't be there on that special night. But you could tell from the way she talked and the song that she decided to segue into it after talking about prom night, oh, Samantha was very much on her mind that night.
Well, how did you enjoy that? That was pretty special, huh? Well, let's get on with the last one. This is our final. And I don't think I'm teaching you anything new when I say where Nan really excelled was in love songs. She delivered love songs and the story within a love song between a man and a woman like no one else. What always amazed me is that her music never seemed to have any racial restrictions. People on both sides, they just loved good music. It didn't matter. Um, there were no racial boundaries when it came to Nan's music. There also didn't seem to be any boundaries when it came to men. That was another thing I've been picking up on uh, throughout the years as well as in my research for this show. Now this next clip, I'll be honest, sort of creeps me out a little bit, makes you wonder, where was the Me Too movement back in the 60s? I think they could have used it. You'll see what I mean. Nan is appearing on a show, a variety show, with a man by the name of Danny Kay. He was a great comedian. She's singing a little song with him. And uh, I think it's two songs. But what I want you to watch for, even though it's a great performance, watch Danny's hands, the floating hands. That's what I call it. That's why it sort of creeps me out a little bit. He obviously was a little bit more than just a Nancy Wilson fan. Again, they seriously needed the Me Too movement. Enjoy. Something happens to me every time I feel that you are near mm, a strange kind of chemical change goes rushing through me I know that mysterious glow means you'll appear a vendor and mm, something happens to me in your arms when I feel your trembling too In the spell that I am under We gaze into each other's eyes And breathless wonder To see that when Something happens to me It happens to you Something happens to me In your arms When I feel your trembling too In the spell that I am under We gaze into each other's eyes In breathless wonder To see that when something happens to me It happens It happens It happens to you I give myself to you 
soul is yours As you desire me I come to Well, that's good. No, 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 that's very bad. That's bad? That's bad because we're supposed to sing a medley of blues. And? And now I'm so happy I can't do it. Oh, Danny, that's terrible. <laughs> I know it is. Oh, I'm so unhappy. Oh, that's wonderful. You mean it? Yeah, let's sing. <laughs> People smile on you all the while. A hospitality, mm -hmm. they were good oh, to that's me. Nice. I couldn't spend no. time. I had the greatest time. I, I went, went out a dancing with the Tennessee deer. A fella then in hand, he had a band you should hear. While the people swayed, man, they really played real harmony. I never will fall. The two that handy call the Memphis Blue. They got a fiddler there who always slickens his hair. Oh, Lordy, how he pulls on that bow. And when you hear that tune, listen to the trombone crew. Well, it sounds just like a sinner on revival day. Here comes that very boat uh -huh. that wraps itself around my heart. Oh, it sets me wild to hear that loving song again. Don't forget about the way. the world could I forget about the Wang Wang Blues? I'm only hoping that my sweet, sweet will come back and chase away those Wang Wang Blues. Hear me talk about the Wang 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 seems to care. No, nobody loves me. Well, 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 well. Speaking of bad luck and trouble, well, you know I've had my share. I'm gonna back my suitcase, move it on down the line. I said I'm gonna pack up my little suitcase, move it on down the line. Well, there ain't no worry and there ain't nobody crying. 
seems to me that every day I'm blue. Blue in the morning, it's true. Blue in the evening, those blues, blues always let me down. Bad news, blues really get me down. I just can't wait for losing the blues. Are you enjoying this so far? Isn't it nice to have videos, clips, music, to just travel back down memory lane one more time? It's been a lot of research to find this material, and we're finding it, we're constantly digging. And in fact, if you have anything that you know of and would like to share, please leave it in the comments section below. We would love to get our hands on more of this rare footage. Now, I need to ask you for a favor. As always, I need to ask you to subscribe. I don't believe I have to beg to do this, but apparently I do every show. I'm just gonna ask you, are you enjoying this? Yes? Do you wanna see more of this? Yes? Then subscribe. That was your turn to say yes. <laughs> just hit the red button down below. Go ahead and subscribe and also ring that notification bell when you do because all it's going to do is not charge you. This is free. You're just going to get an alert that we've uploaded another show and you don't want to miss it. So take a moment, hit that red subscribe button and the bell. Okay, so that's the end of our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. I love looking at all this old footage, even some of it that to me is a little bit controversial. Doesn't matter. It was what it was. And as I said before, Nan has left a huge body of work to work with, and I'll be bringing you as much of it as I possibly can so that we can together share the music and the amazing memories of my Nan, Nancy Wilson. So. Be sure to join me here again when we upload another show. Thanks for joining today. Have you keep the faith to be all you can be and all I love you. And you know I love you right back. <laughs>